This is an HP Compaq 6710B laptop computer. And on the back, you will have this product sticker number. Now, this laptop is having a problem. This laptop is overheating. It's hitting its temperature limit and it's shutting off. Before you begin any work on one of these laptops, I suggest you obtain the maintenance and service guide, which are available from Hewlett Packard. And I will include a link for that. I will turn on the laptop and demonstrate the problem. We will speed up through parts of this. Now this computer was built in 2007. So is it still useful in 2021? Well, that depends on the user, but, but this computer will run Windows 10 64-bit. I'll just demonstrate that. And we can see that we are running Windows 10 version 2004. Now, if you want to know what's inside of your computer, a very useful program is called CPU-Z. And I will run that and we can see what the computer is made of. And it shows us that we have an Intel Core 2 Duo model T7250 running at 2 gigahertz and 4 gigabytes of DDR2 memory. Now, 4 gigabytes is the maximum that this computer will hold. And that is how much is needed to run Windows 10 64-bit, in my opinion. Now, right now, the fan is running very loud. A good free program that can show you how things are running in your computer, particularly the temperature of the CPU, is a program called Open Hardware Monitor. This is Open Hardware Monitor. All these temperatures are in centigrade. Now, it shows that our CPU has two cores, and it shows the temperature for each one. You can see we're running in the low 70s. 70 degrees Celsius is 162 degrees Fahrenheit. Not too hot. If we want to see how hard the CPU is working, we can use Task Monitor. And we launch that by hitting Control-Alt-Delete. And we click on Performance. And you can see our CPU is running about 30%. Not working terribly hard. So now we want to give our CPU something to do to make it work a little harder and get a little hotter. So we will increase the workload on the CPU. We'll launch a browser session. Okay, we now have got a browser session going and our temperature is creeping a little higher. I've opened up a few browser sessions to stress the CPU a little bit more. We've hit 94 degrees centigrade according to Open Hardware Monitor. That's equivalent to 201 degrees Fahrenheit, and that's 6 degrees away from T-junction. However, we have another program running called Hardware Info 64, and it tells us that we have hit 99 degrees centigrade. We're currently at 98 degrees centigrade, and it tells us that thermal throttling has already started. I'm not sure why there's a discrepancy between the two readings. If we look at Task Manager again, we can see that we cannot push the CPU usage to 100%. It's, it's, back down, it's backing down to like 70%. So the CPU is being throttled. It really should be up to 100% with all the things that I have running. The fan is blowing at full speed right now. And it's really quite hot on that side of the computer. So our CPU is now limiting itself. Perhaps that's why we're holding at 94 degrees centigrade and not going any higher. But in any event, this computer is running way too hot. I suspect that there has been a failure of the thermal grease, which is a heat conductive compound placed between the CPU and the heat sink. Going back to our HW Info 64 program, it says we have reached 100 degrees centigrade, currently running at 98. Again, I'm not sure why there is this discrepancy. Possibly the sampling rate is faster on this program. I don't know. I would assume that they would be measuring the same things. This is Open Hardware Monitor, and this is HW Info 64. This is 94 degrees max. This is 100 degrees max. I tend to think that this program is more accurate because we clearly are having some throttling going on. I am going to shut the computer down now. The T-junction temperature is a temperature at which the CPU aggressively starts slowing down in order to reduce heat dissipation. If you want to know what that temperature is, you can find it in the specifications for the CPU, and Intel makes that information available. 
And here is the specification for the T7250 chip. T junction is 100 degrees centigrade. Some other interesting information. TDP means total dissipated power, 35 watts. T junction is 100 degrees centigrade. My understanding is the T junction max, which would be the shutoff temperature, is about 5 degrees higher than this, although I'm not 100% sure of that. We will begin the process of exposing the CPU and heatsink. Start by turning the laptop over. We will remove the battery. There are three screws that are holding the keyboard on, and those are located here and here, and there's one underneath this hatch right here. And you can identify them because they have a little icon that looks like a keyboard. Now we have to remove this hatch here. Get our thumb under here and just lift it out. Now this will expose one of the two memory modules and also the Wi-Fi processor. And here's that third screw right here. Now we turn the laptop over. Now the keyboard has got these little tabs here, 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 and here. One of them is broken. You have to slide these out of the way. And now the keyboard should come up. Now with the keyboard flipped over, we have this cable that runs to the main board here. And it goes into this connector. This black piece has to be basically elevated. Now you get your thumbs under either side of it and just sort of lift it up like this. And out it comes. And by the way, here's the second memory module. I've never really understood why Hewlett Packard Compaq does that. They, they put one under the keyboard and then one underneath a little hatch in the back. I mean, why not just put them both next to each other? I don't know. Now there is this piece right here, which contains the power button and a number of LEDs. This piece has to come off in order to release the fan. And the fan has to come off in order to release the heatsink. Now there's a cable here connecting the main board to this piece, and we're going to have to disconnect that cable. This little brown piece here has to be elevated in order to release the cable. Just kind of get your thumbs under either side of it and lift it up. And out it comes. Now this piece is basically held in with clips. And we will go ahead and start prying this up. Okay, that piece has now come off. We will now remove this memory module because it's partially blocking the heat sink. Just pry these apart and lift it out. Now the fan is powered by this connector. We need to gently pull that out. Now the fan is held in by two screws. One screw down here and one screw right here. We'll go ahead and take those out. One black, one silver. I'm not sure what this does here. It's some kind of a cushion. It just sort of falls out. Now we should be able to lift this fan out. And there it is. And we have quite a bit of dust here. Look at that. Now that can come out for sure. That's part of our problem. We now have the heat sink, which is held on by four screws. We'll go ahead and remove those. And one thing we can see, oh my goodness, look at that. Holy smokes. That's probably most of our problem right there. Okay, now I've taken the heat sink and I've blown all that dust out of it. We now have clear passage of air. 
through all of those fins. Now I just happened to own an air compressor, so it was easy for me to blow all that out, although you could simply use one of those little cans of compressed air or probably just blow it out manually. This was probably the biggest cause of the overheating. As long as we're here, we're going to go ahead and remove all of this old dried out heat sink compound. It's really, it's really quite dry. I think it would be a good idea to refresh that. Here's our new heat sink compound. Now, as far as the GPU, it has got this um, thermal pad on it. I think I'm just going to reuse that. That should be okay. Okay, I finally got it in there. And we screw down these four screws. Now we need to put the fan back in. And we will screw down the silver screw first. And then the black screw. Now we have to reconnect the fan. We plug the connector back in. Now we're going to reconnect our LED button board. We're going to, we're going to want to lay the screen flat in order to expose these hinges here and here. It's just sort of a matter of snapping everything back in again. There's a whole lot of snaps in here. Just got to get them all one by one. Okay, I think that's got them all. Now we reconnect the LED button board to the main board. We slide this flat cable into this connector. And then we push this brown part down around it. And there it is, it's in place. I forgot this piece, I think maybe I can just kind of stuff that in there. Now we're going to put that memory module back in that we took out earlier. Now for the keyboard, flip it upside down, drag this cable over this way, elevate this little black lock-in device, and then we slide the cable in between the white and the black. And push down the black part. Okay, now our cable is connected. We put the keyboard in with these little tabs in first. Now with the keyboard flat, we can slide these pieces forward to lock it in place. Again, we only have three. The fourth one is broken. Now we turn the laptop over. And on the back, we now screw down these three screws that hold the keyboard in place. Take this one first. And this one. And then this one. Now we put the little cover back over the memory module. And it goes on first. So we just kind of snap down and then we screw it into place and we take the battery and we put it back in 
and we'll flip it back over again. Now we will go ahead and turn the laptop on and see what happens. Okay, now we've got a browser session running and our CPU is working pretty hard here. Now, how is our temperature doing? So we have HW info running over here. We have hit 75 degrees centigrade so far. And on the open hardware monitor side, it says we've hit 70 degrees so far. Now this is significantly cooler than we were before. I'll let it run for a few minutes and see what happens. Okay, we now have a couple of browser sessions running and a video at the same time. We're getting pretty close to 100% CPU usage. Temperatures are still staying quite low. On open hardware monitor, we're getting in the low 60s. And in HW Info, we are in low 70s. The fan is not nearly as loud as it was before. So I think we have fixed our problem. Our laptop is no longer overheating, even when it's running near 100% CPU. Okay, so that is the fix. So if you have one of these laptops, the HP Compact Model 6310B, and your fan is screaming, then try getting the HP Info 64 program or the Open Hardware Monitor program and see what the temperatures are. If you have an elevated temperature, you saw how easy it was. You could have a clogged up fan or you could have dried out thermal paste. Replace those and your laptop will be running nice and cool again.